fuck. Hold on. I'm the only person with a home phone, and the shit never stops ringing with telemarketers. Hold on. Look at my cordless. I got a VTEC. What up, y'all? Welcome to the maiden voyage of Mobile Homies. I just call my friends, man. That's what we do. This is the very first episode. I couldn't have done this with anybody else. My man, let's see the true speaker. Woo! Thank you for having me, sir. How are you holding up, man? Doing all right, man. You know, um, we kind of work from home all the time. You feel me? Yeah. So... It's not that much of a stretch, but yeah. And I've actually, I actually find I'm working a little bit more now, just because people have, everybody's reaching out. You know, everybody's trying to work kind of the same way right now. Right. Um. So there's that, and then you know, as you know, but other people don't. Like you know, I, I, I have a bunch of immunocompromised close friends and family. You know, Gab, my mom's right. recovering from cancer. She well, she's better now, but so I'll be going out and I'll be shopping for them. You know. Um, so there's that. I thought that was pretty amazing, man. Like when I, when I talked to Gab and he was like, yo, Latif brought by some groceries. I was at one of the farmer Joe's and this dude that was standing real close to me and wasn't really respecting, you know, the social distancing. I moved away yeah. from him and right when I moved away from him, he turned to the left and coughed like right over my food. And I was just like, oh, come on, man. That's just disrespectful in the quarantine era. You can't do that, man. I coughed the other day in, in public, and I've never felt that warm, tingly, I'm being watched feeling like that, like ever in my life. It was so crazy, you know what I mean? Like next time you're out and about, if you can just peep that, man, it's just like, so it's wild shit. Even like the memes have been an incredible coping mechanism, I, I feel like. Who, who have, what, what comedians have you been seeing online recently that, that have been as, have been shining in this moment? I mean, Lil, Lil Duval, I feel like his output is astonishing, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like a lot of, and I feel like a lot of comedians are also, they're, they're like, man, he's done it, you know? I feel like it's the medium in which he's the most funny, you know? I see him in other mediums and he's also funny, but the medium yeah. he's the most funny is social media, you know? Yeah. You know, for me, like one of the definitely one of the silver linings in this whole thing is that I, I really see people being really compassionate with other people right now. I do see more of a a, a spirit of uh, togetherness for sure. Like the first few weeks of this shit, everybody was in shock. You know what I mean? Everybody's dealing with, oh, I just lost my job. Oh. How am I going to pay the bills? Oh, what are we going through? Oh, you know, it's like, understandably, <clears throat> I feel like, I think, you know, just for the record right now, I think we're in like week four of quarantine right now. Is that, is that right? So. I think that's okay. all right, yeah. Yeah, so like, I felt like for the first two weeks, everybody was just in fucking shock. You know what I mean? And it was like, what is going on? You know, and, and there's nobody you can ask to be like, well, what did y'all do the last time there was a worldwide pandemic and everybody was confined to their, confined to their yeah. home? You know, it's, it's completely unprecedented, you know what I mean? And I think, but now that that two weeks, that three weeks is kind of a, and people are starting to settle back in and they're, they're starting to find a new routine, you know? I, I feel like, um, you know, we're really starting to see ourselves become this other version of ourselves. Back at it again. You know what it is. Tonight, Poke Bowls. Poke Bowls. How do you feel about this? I mean, do you think we're doing as much as we should be? Are we taking it as seriously as we should be as, as a society, shelter in place and quarantine, in your opinion? Man, when I go out to the grocery store, I'm like, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> people be out here raw dog in nature, man. They be out here, no gloves, no mask. <laughs> just like trying to just, I'm just like, don't do it, man. Put a yeah. hat on them hands, um, you know, so to speak. Or did you say, for, first of all, time out, did you say raw dog in nature? Yes, yes. People be out here trying to raw dog nature, be. They be out here with no, 
gloves on, no mask, just yeah. free balling it and playing, you know? Come on, man. You can't be free balling it or in nature right now. It's just not free fine. balling. You know? Uh, but yeah, man. I think sometimes as Americans, we get a little macho. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it ain't going to be shit. We'll just, we'll deal with it when it happens. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Corona. I was like that. I was like that. When this, when this shit first happened, right? When this shit first happened, I was like, fuck this shit. I'm drinking a Corona right now. You know what I mean? It was it was nothing, dude. I'm, I'm going to a Chinese restaurant right now. You know, like I didn't, I didn't take that shit seriously at all. You know, that's that's another thing is like like I, I would ask you in this time, like what other kinds of mechanisms have you been using to cope with these parameters that we have to live with here? Oh man, we we for sure. We <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing that you know maybe not being spoken about too much, but like the home improvements going on in this quarantine are about to be out of control. So I'm about to have like a weight room in the back. You feel me? We about to have yeah. chicken coop back here. You about to Shay, you, wait, wait, let, let's see, you have a chicken coop? We do not yet, but the things have been ordered. I believe that the chickens have already been bought and have born dates. And so we also have the opportunity in in these in this crisis to really better ourselves. You know, because I don't remember a time where I had this much presence of mind, you know what I mean? Where I'm not distracted by a million things. I'm not on the road. I'm not in the studio. I don't have some crazy deadline. I think there's sort of a heightened sense of connectivity right mm -hmm. now, you know, just in the sense that there's so many other ways and it's, it's possible to connect in other ways than, you know, as we talk, Music has helped feed our spirits. Music has helped us stay strong and buoyant and, and sort of uh, in the moment, you know. And it's a lot of things, you know, we've talked about how like the last trumpet is one of the themes that, that gets discussion. But you know, while the last trumpet does have the lyric in it, you know. Healthcare battles bioengineering for the worldwide scare of the plague that we're fearing. Healthcare battles bioengineering for the worldwide scare of the plague that we're fearing, which is like right now. So but poignant. Also, but it's also the right now. We have the opportunity for self improvement. We have the opportunity for self-improvement, you know what I mean? And that's really like a, a lot of what we just talked about. Like these these things are self-improvements. Um, they're self-improvements of, of the community. They're improvements of self as they interact with the community. They're improvements yes. of self as far as self-realization and self-clarity. And we're talking about things that are improvements, just, just physical self-improvements. Just this, Right now, it is a time of, you know, that there's this terrible scare out there and you have to do the right things to be safe and not get sick and protect others that are vulnerable it is also an opportunity for self-improvement you know? absolutely Both absolutely there's the silver lining there is the opportunity you know sure. and i think i think that's a great place to leave it man yep. you know so listen, man, I, I want to say thank you, man. This was our maiden voyage. I really enjoyed this. I knew that you would be the perfect person to do this for the very first one. Because I know I know, just from, you know, the 25 years of us knowing together, these conversations could go on forever, you know. And, I, and so I knew that once we got rolling, this would go to a, a great place. You know what I mean? So I really want to thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. Always a pleasure. Latif, the true speaker, my brother. Love you, man. Love you too, man. People so let me know.